Welcome to Real Truth Real Quick. My name is Rick Smith, Director of Digital Ministries at Watermark Church in Dallas, Texas, and I'm here with Todd Wagner. How you doing, Todd? I'm well, Rick. How you doing? I'm doing great. Doing really well. And uh, here's the question today. The question goes like this. Do miracles happen today like they happened in the Bible? Interesting question. I think I'd answer it this way. Uh, if Jesus was right, the answer is no. They happen in even greater ways. Explain. Okay. All right. So in John 14, 12, he says, if you believe in me, then these works that I do, you will do, in fact, even greater works than these. How can we do, how can we do a greater work? Well, yeah, it doesn't mean we're turning more water into wine than he is and putting Napa Valley out of business. It doesn't mean we're raising more people from the dead than he does. But there's something else. If the reason that Jesus was here is to be a part of God's redemptive program in history, and when Jesus says, I go to be with the Father, I won't leave you as orphans, I'm going to send the Spirit to you. The Spirit was the means by which Jesus said, I do everything that I do. And so he's saying the Spirit of God's going to indwell you, and I'm going to use you. These things that I have done, I will do through you. If you ask me, I will do them. Now let's talk about miracles. Miracles are not something that happen all the time. They're not normicals. And so we shouldn't look for them everywhere. They're called miracles for a reason. Um, the purpose of miracles in the Scripture is the same as uh, miracles today. It really is two purposes. The primary one is it was a sign, an authenticating work. It was, if you will, like the signet ring of a king. Um, it's the same idea. The, the, the seven miracles in the Gospel of John, which was written that you might know that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. It's why John put those signs in there. It's why a king would have a signet ring. What's a signet ring? It was a, uh, a ring with a unique design that was easily recognizable, that was only in the possession of the king. And so when you got a letter and you got that signet ring stamped into the wax that sealed the letter, you knew this letter came from the king because only the king has that sign. That's what miracles are. And the purpose of miracles primarily in the scripture is to authenticate God's messenger. That's why you see a disproportionate amount of miracles at certain times in your Bible, specifically four. You see them at the entry of the law when God's revealing, this is my word with Moses. Early on in Moses' ministry, a lot of miracles. And then they begin to taper off because he's already been authenticated as God's messenger. It's why you see Joshua have some. Hey, it wasn't about Moses. It was about God working through Moses. I'm now working through Joshua. They taper off. After the law, there was the prophets, the men that came back to call people back to a relationship with God. And so you see with Elijah, a lot of miracles. Elijah, some miracles. And then you see the miracles taper off because they've already been validated as God's messengers. The next time you see a preponderance of miracles is in the life of Christ early on in his ministry. But here's what's amazing. There comes a time in Jesus' ministry where he shuts them off. He says, there's going to be no more miracles. You've already got enough revelation. The signet ring, these easily recognizable, okay, uh, only in the possession of the king, unique things that only God can do. I've done them. That should tell you something, that I'm who I say I am. And so uh, Jesus says there's not going to be any more signs. In fact, he goes so far as to say it's a wicked and perverse generation that seeks signs or miracles as a way i'm going to believe in you god if you keep doing this thing i'll trust you god if that star goes out i'll trust you if my grandmother is healed from cancer i'll trust you god whatever it might be for you we should trust in god because of what he's already revealed by the way the fourth time you see a preponderance of miracles is in the beginning of the church when God's saying, this is my body that I'm going to work through, the gates of hell will not stand against. And so early on in the life of the church, you see healings. You even see people do what Jesus did, raise folks from the dead. But after that, the ongoing miracle of the New Testament is love. They will know we are Christians by our miracles. No. By our regenerated hearts that bear the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. Jesus said, by this all men you will know you're my disciples. Not if you do miracles, but if the miraculous agape love of God dwells in you. So, do miracles happen today like they in the Bible? Well, if Christians are who they're supposed to be in greater ways, do they look like they do in the Bible? No. Can God still do everything he did in the Bible today? Yes. He can part seas. He can heal the sick. He can... Uh, give people the ability to speak in a tongue that they do not know that it's a known language so others can hear the gospel. He can do that if he wants. But should we expect it? And do we think it's a sign of spiritual maturity? No. Miracles were never a sign of God anointing somebody only. Like John the Baptist is an example. 
What miracles did John the Baptist do? Nothing. But he was clearly, Jesus said, there's no greater man born from a woman than John the Baptist. But they were authenticating works to show that God is working through a new messenger to reveal himself in a unique and special way. That's why you don't see as many miracles today through apostles and whatnot. But God can do whatever he wants to do. But the ongoing miracle is the love of the church. And I have to ask, Todd, great stuff, but when we see a guy on TV and he goes, hey, I can do miracles or you can buy this prayer cloth that I'm selling that you rub on your bills, and you're, I mean, how should we respond to that kind of stuff, one person? Well, I would tell you that uh, I wish he was right. God can do whatever he wants to do. I, I, you know, listen, my general uh, belief about most of that is it's chicanery and charlatans, and uh, God will take care of that and judge that. What I want to just be is biblical and faithful. Go back and listen to what I said, and you say, you want to see a miracle? Watch me love my brother, my sister. Love God and pursue him. Great stuff. Hey, pray for great things. Pray for great but things. But don't demand them because God says it's a wicked and perverse person that says, I need a sign. So seek the Savior, not, not the miracle. So we'll see you next week on Real Truth Real Quick.